Hi! I'm going to show you how to sand cast a signet ring with a rough sapphire slab, rough sapphire slab, in the top of it. All right, let's get into it. All right, there's our ring and our stone. Let's set that to the side. And we have our aluminium flask that's made by Craig Dabler in the United States. So his brand is DIY Casting and he makes all sorts of sand casting equipment. And this is his clay, it's red clay. So let's get into it. We're gonna start with the male flask first and that's the one with this lip. And we're gonna put it lip side down and pack from behind. So we put one layer in first, make sure it's tightly packed with your thumb and fingers and then just put a big old handful in behind that and compress it with a hammer. All right. Let's clear our space. We have a ruler to cut off all that excess clay so that when we flip it over, it's all nice and flat and easy to work with. So lip side is the side we wanna work with. We're just um, packing it from behind and then compressing it with the hammer because if we were to pack it from the top, the lip side, and we were going to hit this side with the hammer, that lip will eventually distort to the point where you can't put your other flask on top of it. So for the longevity of your flask, make sure you flip it over, pack from behind, and then turn it back over and we start working with lip side. So let's put some cornstarch down on that surface. The cornstarch is there to help your object come out of the clay, but it's also going to stop your two clay halves from getting stuck together. So we're going to be using this flask in a vertical orientation. That means that we will be casting through the side of the flask, through this hole. So let's make sure that when we're putting our ring in the mold, we're making sure the back of the shank is facing where we're going to be sprueing it up, where we're going to be putting our hole for the metal and our funnel for the metal. So let's press that into the clay about halfway. That seems good. All right. Now let's get our female flask and pop her on top, making sure that there's no clay in this lip because we want to make sure that those two flasks fit together snug. There we go. Now we're going to get loose crumbly bits of clay. We're going to use our thumb and fingers to pack that nice and tight around the object. And then a big old handful and compress with a hammer. Clear our workspace and let's scrape off all that extra clay. All right, let's open it up. Fantastic. So let's do our sprue and funnel. So this is going to be our funnel, or at least one half of our funnel. And then this is the other half of our funnel. There we go, nice and easy. Now we're going to use our straw to compress the clay to create a sprue. And we're gonna do the same thing on this other half. Let's just gently pull that ring out and do it on this side as well. Let's just tidy that up a little bit. Make sure it's all nice and smooth. And by doing this, we will have distorted the shank of the ring. So let's just get our ring and really gently place it back into position. Give it a gentle press and that's just to crispify the impression. Make sure flat surfaces go back to being flat, rounded surfaces back to rounded. We don't have any, any unexpected undulations in our work. All right. Looking good. Let's do some air vents. So Craig has designed his flask that they have these nifty little gaps in the ring so that you can create air vents out of those little holes. So let's do that. There's one. There's the other. And look, it doesn't hurt to have a few more. So let's just have some here as well. Let's get that clay out of the way. 
Fantastic. Now let's whack our stone in place. So I've got my pawpaw ointment, my stone tweezers, and my stone. Let's have a little perv on the stone. See which side we think is the most handsome because we want to make sure the most handsome surface is the one that we're looking at. And I think that's it. So let's grab a little bit of this pawpaw ointment and it's going to be our jelly, our adhesive to keep our stone against the clay wall. Doesn't have to be pawpaw ointment, can be any Vaseline sort of goop, any petroleum jelly product. All right, we want to stick it against this vertical wall. So let's just pop it in there like that. And because I want my stone to be kind of in the middle of my ring, so I want it sort of in the middle, which means that we need the stone to be half on one side, half on the other. So we have our stone sticking out of our mold so that it's in half of this side. And when I close it up, it's going to be in half of that side, which means the stone should be roughly in the middle. All right, let's close it up and cast. All righty, so our flask is sitting upright so it can't roll away anywhere. We've got metal in the crucible and we've got our torch. So we've got red for gas, green for oxygen. Oxygen's going to make our flame nice and hot. So let's turn our gas on, ignite it, and introduce our oxygen. And start melting. Dominant hand on the crucible handle. Non-dominant hand is doing the melting. The hottest part of the flame is about two centimeters away from the bright blue tip. And you're going to need more metal than you think you need. So say if you think your ring is going to cast at 5 grams, make sure you're casting with 10 to 15 grams of silver. You need that extra weight to create pressure to force that molten metal deeper into the recesses of your design. All right, give it a shuffle, make sure it's all mixed together and molten. We're also checking to see how viscous it is. And it needs a little bit longer. I need that at a rolling melt which means I want it to be rolling around here in one blob, not getting stuck to the edge of the crucible and not stretching. We want it to be one nice round blob and that's what we've got, a rolling melt. All right, set yourself up the pour. Rest your crucible against the edge of the flask. Hold your flame there for a few more moments to make sure the metal is really, really hot. And then all you have to do Keep the flame on the metal and pour it down the hole really quick. One, two, three. Whoop, down the hole. Flame off. Let's turn that extractor on. So it looks like the stone has cracked right across here. That's a shame. But these things happen. Okay, so this stone is absolutely cracked. And sometimes it's the fault of the stone, as in there's a flaw in it and it breaks upon that inclusion or that fault line um, under the pressure, sometimes under the heat. But there are things we can do to try and make it a, a gentler transition for the stone. So how about we go through a few different designs and see if we can figure out how to be a little bit more gentle on our stones. Um, let's give it a go. All right. So one of my other ideas is perhaps the metal was too thick. So there was too much metal, which means there was a lot of heat. Um, and then as the metal shrinks, as it's cooling, it creates more pressure on the stone and makes it snap. So I was thinking maybe a design where there's less metal, it's thinner, so it's not as hot. And then when the metal is cooling, it's not shifting as much. So the stone isn't put under as much pressure to break. So I thought if I have this beautiful rectangular slab sapphire right in the middle of this signet, Maybe it'll be okay. I hope so, because it's a really nice stone. But let's try it. 
Okay, mold made. Let's place this stone in. I think that's a nicer side. So let's put a little bit of jelly on that. Cool. Let's stick it in the clay. Make sure it's in the middle. Fantastic. All right, let's close the mold and see how this one goes. One of the things I'm going to do a little bit different for this stone is I'm going to let the flame travel down the hole and heat up that stone gently to try and stop the stone from being too shocked by the sudden heat. And let's see if that makes a difference. As well as using a design that's a little bit thinner so that there's less metal, so there's less hot heat and there's less, I guess, pressure when it comes to the shrinkage. Alright. Let's put the flame down the hole a little bit. Heat up that stone gently. Let's toss the metal in. Let's see if that's made a difference. Alright, so we still did get a crack. Right here. Shame. All right. Let's try something else. So this time I've chosen a stone that is more compact, more rounded, rather than long and square. So let's see if that makes a difference. I've gone back to the original design I was doing, which is this oval signet ring, which has, you know, it is a chunkier top. It means there will be more heat on the stone potentially more pressure when the metal is shrinking. But I thought I'd give it a go with a rounder, more compact stone that has less edges that could snap off. Um, and I'm going to heat up the stone like I did with that last one. And see if that helps. So let's melt down that last ring and pick out the shards of sapphire as the metal melts away from them. Let's try heating inside of that glass. Try and get that stone nice and warmed up. Ready for this molten metal. No cracks. Alright, so was it choosing a stone that was rounder that did it? Or was it heating up the stone before we pour the metal on it. Not sure. Okay. So I've chopped the, um, the sprue off with my bolt cutters. There's the ring. You can see through it, which is quite nice. Now, did this one work because the stone was just a better, cleaner stone with 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 no inclusions did it work because it was rounded not only was it a more compact 
round sort of stone, but it also had rounded edges. There weren't sort of sharp square edges to it. Did that help? Or was it heating the stone with the flame before pouring the metal in? Not sure, but it worked. So thanks for troubleshooting with me. And um, I don't know if I've given you any answers, but maybe I've given you some ideas for how to troubleshoot when you are running into the same sorts of problems with your custom play stones. All right, till next time. Bye.